Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're delving deeper into the fascinating realm of energy storage and conversion. As we've discussed, electricity is a remarkable source of power, but it does come with limitations, particularly in terms of storage. The electricity we use in our daily lives can't easily be stored for later use. This is where the concept of converting electrical energy into chemical energy comes into play. Imagine the convenience of storing energy in a chemical form that's portable and can be saved for when it's needed most. This becomes crucial for various applications. Let's take a closer look at how this conversion process works. All right, students, let's dive into the intricacies of chemical energy storage. When we convert electrical energy into chemical energy, we open up new possibilities for energy storage. This process involves certain chemical reactions that allow us to capture electrical energy within molecules. A prime example of this is battery technology, where we harness chemical reactions to store energy. These reactions enable us to hold on to energy until it's needed, offering us greater flexibility and reliability. Today's journey takes us into the intriguing process of converting chemical energy back into electricity for practical applications. Imagine having the ability to release the stored energy whenever required. This is where the magic of energy conversion comes in. The stored chemical energy can be transformed back into electrical energy, making it usable to power devices and systems. Battery technology, for instance, involves discharging the stored energy through specific chemical reactions. This process allows us to utilize the stored energy efficiently. As we continue our exploration, it becomes evident that energy storage plays a pivotal role in modern society. Think about the integration of renewable energy sources like solar and wind power. These sources aren't constant. But by storing excess energy during peak production times, we can ensure a steady power supply even when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing. Moreover, energy storage has revolutionized industries such as electric vehicles and portable electronics, making them more efficient and convenient. Additionally, emergency backup systems rely on stored energy to provide power during outages. It's truly remarkable how energy conversion and storage shape our lives in countless ways. As we wrap up today's lesson, let's tie everything together by revisiting the concepts of kinetic and potential energy. Remember that energy can be categorized into these forms based on its state. In the context of energy storage and conversion, we often encounter potential energy, energy stored in the arrangement of particles within molecules. The chemical reactions we've explored today involve changes in this potential energy, which allows for the storage and release of energy. Keep in mind that these principles underlie the technology that powers our world, from batteries to renewable energy systems. With that, our journey into the captivating world of energy storage and conversion comes to a close. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring. Hello once again, students. In this segment, we're delving into a captivating realm known as oxidation reduction reactions, or redox reactions for short. What's remarkable about redox reactions is the exchange of electrons that takes place. When an atom undergoes oxidation, it loses electrons, while a reduced atom gains electrons. These transfers of electrons play a pivotal role in various processes. Yes, you guessed it right. Batteries, those essential power sources, depend on redox reactions. But these reactions extend beyond batteries. They're also responsible for the rusting of iron the browning of your favorite foods, and even the respiration of animals. Now, let's take a peek into a fascinating field called electrochemistry, which explores the intricate connections between electricity and chemical reactions. Electrochemistry isn't just about spontaneous processes, it also dives into non-spontaneous ones. And by the time we wrap up this segment, you'll have a solid understanding of the concepts we're exploring. So, let's embark on this electrifying journey together. Welcome to Topic 3. Dear students, today, we're diving deeper into oxidation states and their pivotal role in the world of chemical reactions. Oxidation states are a crucial concept to grasp. They indicate the charge an atom would possess if its electrons were distributed differently. 
We often refer to these as oxidation numbers. These numbers hold immense importance, especially in redox reactions. They help us to determine which atoms lose or gain electrons during a reaction. By understanding oxidation states, we can decipher the changes that occur within atoms and track how electrons are transferred between them. So, as we journey through this section, keep in mind that oxidation states are the key to unlocking the secrets behind redox reactions. Welcome to topic 4, Eager Learners. Our exploration of redox reactions continues, and this time, we're focusing on their real-world applications. You might be wondering where you can find redox reactions beyond the confines of the classroom. Well, they're all around us. Redox reactions play a vital role in batteries, which power many of our devices and vehicles. These reactions involve the movement of electrons to generate electrical energy. But that's not all. Redox reactions are responsible for corrosion and rusting, which can be quite a nuisance. On a biological level, think about respiration. Yes, that very process that keeps us alive. Redox reactions fuel the release of energy from molecules like glucose, allowing our cells to function. So, as we uncover these applications, you'll see that redox reactions are more than just theoretical concepts. They shape the world we interact with every day. Hello again, curious minds. We've arrived at topic 5, where we're immersing ourselves further into the realm of electrochemistry. What exactly is electrochemistry, you might ask? It's the branch of science that explores the intriguing interplay between electricity and chemical reactions. In our exploration, we encounter two types of processes, spontaneous and non-spontaneous. Spontaneous processes are those that occur naturally, driven by the inherent tendencies of substances to move towards lower energy states. On the flip side, non-spontaneous processes require an external energy source to initiate. To make this more tangible, think about rusting as a spontaneous process and the process of charging a battery as non-spontaneous. As we progress, you'll gain a solid grasp of the distinctions between these processes and how they influence the reactions we're studying. So, let's continue unraveling the mysteries of electrochemistry. Hello, dear students. Today, we're about to unlock the secrets of oxidation reduction reactions. These reactions are pivotal in the world of chemistry, and we decipher them by carefully observing the oxidation numbers, also known as oxidation states, of the elements involved. Our journey into this realm begins by Understanding how oxidation numbers help us identify changes in a chemical reaction. Imagine you're on a detective's mission, and the clues lie within these numbers. Let's illustrate this with an example involving zinc and a strong acid. When zinc metal reacts with the acid, a spontaneous reaction takes place. We can represent it as zine solid plus two hydrogen ions, which leads to the formation of zine two ions and hydrogen gas. By assigning oxidation numbers to each species in the reaction, we uncover the fascinating world of oxidation and reduction. This process of tracking oxidation numbers is a key tool in our chemical detective kit. Let's dive deeper into this topic and explore the intricate dance of electrons and charges within chemical reactions. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of oxidation-reduction reactions. These reactions involve changes in oxidation numbers, which provide us with valuable insights into the exchange of electrons between atoms. In our example here, let's take a closer look at the oxidation numbers beneath the equation. We observe a shift in the oxidation number of zinc, Zn, from 0 to plus 2, indicating that it has lost electrons. On the other hand, the oxidation number of hydrogen, H, changes from plus 1 to 0, suggesting that it has gained electrons. This significant change in oxidation numbers highlights the occurrence of an oxidation-reduction reaction. These reactions are crucial for various chemical processes, from batteries to corrosion and much more. Now, let's continue our exploration of these captivating reactions. Hello again, dear students. Today, we're embarking on a journey into the intriguing realm of electron transfer and oxidation numbers. Our previous discussions on energy production laid the foundation, and now we're delving deeper. 
In certain reactions, like the one represented in equation 20.2, there's a clear exchange of electrons between substances. These reactions provide us with a vivid demonstration of electron transfer. However, not all reactions are as straightforward. Take the combustion of hydrogen gas, for instance, where two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen combine to form two molecules of water. Here, the oxidation numbers change, indicating a shift in electron distribution. But interestingly, we can't always say that substances in such reactions literally gain or lose electrons. This can be a bit puzzling, but it's a vital concept to understand. Now, let's take a closer look at how oxidation numbers act as clues to electron movements. Welcome, inquisitive minds. Today, we're immersing ourselves in the combustion of hydrogen gas, a perfect example to illustrate the complexities of oxidation numbers. This balanced equation, 2H2, G, plus O2, G, right pointing arrow 2H2O, G, showcases the transformation of hydrogen and oxygen molecules into water molecules. Now, pay attention to the oxidation numbers as they reveal the intricate dance of electrons. In this reaction, the oxidation state of hydrogen changes from 0 to plus 1, and the oxidation state of oxygen shifts from 0 to minus 2. It might seem like a direct exchange of electrons is happening, but in reality, there's no literal gain or loss of electrons. Instead, oxidation numbers guide us in understanding these electron shifts. Let's move forward, unveiling more captivating mysteries. Fantastic to see you all engaged. Now, let's unravel the concept of oxidation numbers. Think of them as hypothetical charges that elements would carry if all the electrons were shared equally. We assign these numbers following specific rules, helping us make sense of electron shifts in reactions. Remember, the sum of oxidation numbers in a compound must add up to its overall charge. This concept becomes incredibly handy in identifying the movement of electrons within molecules. Keep in mind that oxidation numbers aren't the same as actual charges. They're more like detectives that lead us to the truth behind electron distribution. Ready to dive deeper? Let's explore further. Bravo, students. Now, let's connect the dots between electron distribution and chemical reactions. The way electrons are distributed around atoms has a significant impact on reactivity. Chemical reactions, at their core, are all about the rearrangement of electrons. By grasping the intricacies of electron movement, we can even predict how reactions will unfold. That's where our understanding of oxidation reduction, or redox, reactions comes into play. These reactions involve the transfer of electrons between elements, altering their oxidation states. Our exploration today has shed light on just a fraction of the vast world of electron dynamics. As we move forward, remember that every chemical reaction is a symphony of electrons rearranging to create the beautiful dance of matter transformation. Keep your curiosity alive, for there's much more to uncover. Hello again, dear students. Today, we're delving deeper into the realm of chemical reactions specifically focusing on oxidation reduction reactions, also known as redox reactions. These reactions involve a change in the oxidation states of the atoms involved. Let's take a closer look at an example equation 20.3. In this equation, hydrogen undergoes oxidation from an oxidation state of 0 to plus 1, while oxygen is reduced from an oxidation state of 0 to minus 2. This significant shift in oxidation states clearly indicates that we're dealing with an oxidation reduction reaction. However, here's an important note. While tracking oxidation state serves as a handy form of bookkeeping, we mustn't mistake an atom's oxidation state for its actual charge within a chemical compound. Keep in mind that the two might not always align. Now, let's move forward and explore more intriguing aspects of redox reactions and their role in the world of chemistry. Hello again, students. Today, we're unraveling the fascinating world of redox reactions and the dance between oxidation and reduction. When it comes to redox reactions, keep in mind that both oxidation and reduction take place simultaneously. 
It's like a dynamic exchange of electrons between substances. Now, let's talk about the key players in these reactions. On one hand, we have the oxidizing agent, also known as the oxidant. This substance takes electrons from another substance, effectively causing its own reduction. On the other hand, we have the reducing agent, or reductant. This remarkable entity willingly gives up electrons, leading to the reduction of another substance while undergoing oxidation itself. To illustrate, take a look at equation 20.2, where we see H plus, aqueous, acting as the species being reduced, making it the oxidizing agent. On the flip side, Zn, solid, is being oxidized, making it the reducing agent. Remember, it's all about the captivating transfer of electrons and the dynamic interplay between substances. Let's proceed to delve even deeper into the intricacies of redox reactions. Welcome back, students. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of redox reactions and exploring some fundamental concepts related to reduction. Let's begin by understanding what the term reduction means in the context of chemical reactions. In a redox reaction, reduction refers to a process in which a substance gains electrons, leading to a decrease in its oxidation state. Now, in a reduction half reaction, where exactly do these electrons appear? Well, electrons are gained on the side of the reaction where reduction occurs. This brings us to the term reductant. A reductant is a substance that donates electrons to another substance, causing it to undergo reduction. But wait, there's more to explore. We also have the concept of a reducing agent. This is a substance that facilitates the reduction of another substance by donating its electrons. So, in essence, a reducing agent is the one responsible for bringing about reduction. As we delve deeper into these concepts, remember that redox reactions play a crucial role in various natural and industrial processes. Let's move forward and enrich our understanding of reduction and its significance. As we conclude our journey today, we've delved into the captivating world of the hall herald process and its impact on aluminum production. From the challenges of early aluminum extraction to the revolutionary electrolytic process developed by Charles M. Hall and Paul Harold, we've witnessed the evolution of an industry. This process not only made aluminum more affordable but also paved the way for advancements in technology and energy efficiency. Remember, every innovation begins with a problem to solve and a determination to find a better way. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and who knows, you might just be the next innovator to shape the future. Hello, dear students. Today, we're diving into a fascinating topic in chemistry oxidation reduction reactions, also known as redox reactions. These reactions involve the transfer of electrons between elements, resulting in changes in their oxidation numbers. Let's take a closer look at some balanced equations and identify whether they involve oxidation reduction. As we explore each equation, pay attention to the elements undergoing changes in oxidation numbers, as they play a crucial role in these reactions. Are you ready? Let's jump in. Let's start by examining the balanced equations provided and determine if they involve oxidation reduction reactions. In equation, A, we see the reaction between silver 1 nitrate and cobalt 2 chloride. As we break down the oxidation numbers, we notice that both AG and company undergo changes. Similarly, in equation, B, involving lead 4 oxide and PBO, we observe changes in oxidation numbers for PB and O. Lastly, equation, C, presents us with 2 hydrogen sulfate reacting with 2 sodium bromide. This results in changes in oxidation numbers for bridge and S. Remember, the changes in oxidation numbers indicate the transfer of electrons, a key characteristic of redox reactions. Understanding oxidation numbers is essential because they help us identify and comprehend redox reactions. The changes in oxidation states signify the transfer of electrons between elements, which is at the heart of these reactions. As we move forward in our chemistry journey, you'll discover that balancing redox equations becomes more manageable when considering oxidation numbers. 
So, keep these concepts in mind as they will serve as valuable tools in our exploration of the captivating world of chemistry. Before we wrap up, let's recap what we've learned today. Oxidation reduction reactions involve the transfer of electrons between elements, resulting in changes in their oxidation numbers. Identifying the elements undergoing these changes is crucial for understanding redox reactions. As we venture into more complex scenarios in our upcoming lessons, this foundation will prove invaluable. So, remember, the journey into the world of chemistry is just beginning, and we're excited to explore further together. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the fundamental principle that guides the world of chemical reactions the law of conservation of mass. When we balance a chemical equation, we're ensuring that the amount of each element remains the same on both sides of the equation. In other words, atoms are neither created nor destroyed during any chemical reaction. This principle is crucial in understanding how matter transforms and interacts. Let's take a closer look at how we achieve this balance. All right, dear students, let's continue our exploration into the intricate world of chemical reactions. As we balance oxidation reduction reactions, we encounter an additional requirement beyond the conservation of mass. In these reactions, we must ensure that the gains and losses of electrons are also balanced. Just like atoms, electrons are neither created nor destroyed during any chemical reaction. This concept might sound complex, but it's a crucial aspect of understanding how electrons play a pivotal role in chemical transformations. Let's dive deeper into this concept. Hello, curious minds. Today's lesson continues with the captivating topic of electron transfer within chemical reactions. Imagine substances undergoing transformations where some lose electrons, while others gain them. It's essential to maintain balance if a substance loses a certain number of electrons, another substance must gain the same number of electrons. This principle keeps the electron count consistent and showcases the interconnectedness of reactions. Remember, this rule applies across the board, and as we explore further, you'll see how it fits into the grand puzzle of chemical reactions. Greetings, young scholars. Our journey through chemistry takes us into the fascinating realm of redox reactions. What's redox, you ask? It's short for reduction and oxidation. Two critical processes that occur during these reactions. When a substance loses electrons, we call it oxidation, and when a substance gains electrons, it's reduction. These processes involve the exchange of electrons, playing the role of agents of change in chemical transformations. As we explore further, you'll understand how redox reactions are pivotal in various natural and industrial processes. Stay curious and let's uncover the secrets of redox. Welcome back inquisitive minds. Today, we're unraveling the profound influence of electrons on chemical transformations. These tiny particles are more than just fundamental components of matter. They're the key players in driving reactions. The way electrons interact with atoms shapes the molecular structures we see around us. Moreover, the movement of electrons is intimately tied to energy changes within reactions. By grasping this connection, you'll gain deeper insights into how our world is interconnected through these intricate chemical processes. Let's continue on our captivating journey of discovery. Hello, students. Today, we're delving into a fascinating aspect of chemical equations, balancing redox reactions. We've already seen that in simple equations, electron balancing can happen almost automatically. But here's the catch. Not all redox equations are as straightforward. Some are more intricate, demanding careful consideration of the electrons lost and gained. In this section, we're going to explore a method that makes this balancing act more manageable. It's called the method of half reactions, and it's a systematic approach that helps us balance those complex redox equations. By the time we finish this section, you'll have the skills to expertly balance redox equations, no matter how intricate they might be. So, let's jump right into it. Welcome back, curious minds. 
Today, we're unraveling the concept of half reactions, a powerful tool in the world of balancing redox equations. These half reactions provide us with a structured method to approach the task of balancing equations that involve the transfer of electrons. The beauty of this method lies in a systematic procedure that guides us step by step. By carefully accounting for the electrons that are lost and gained, we can achieve balance in even the most intricate redox equations. As we move forward, you'll see how half reactions come to our rescue and provide us with a clear path to success. Hello again, inquisitive learners. Today's mission, mastering the art of the half reaction method. Here's how it works. We break down those intricate redox equations into smaller, more manageable half reactions. This step-by-step -step approach is a lifesaver. For each half reaction, we carefully balance the electrons involved in the oxidation and reduction processes separately. It's like solving a puzzle, one piece at a time. By tackling each half reaction, we're able to achieve equilibrium in the overall equation. As you dive into practicing this method, you'll discover its true power and finesse in handling those complex chemical scenarios. Welcome to the final stretch, eager learners. Your journey through balancing redox equations using the half-reaction method is almost complete. As you've embraced this method and honed your skills, you're well on your way to becoming true experts in this field. And remember, these skills are not just confined to the classroom. The ability to balance redox equations has real-world applications from understanding chemical reactions in industrial processes to deciphering environmental changes. By perfecting this method, you're not only learning about chemistry, you're also enhancing your problem-solving and critical thinking abilities. So, keep practicing, keep exploring, and keep pushing the boundaries of your knowledge. Fantastic job, enthusiastic scholars! Let's take a moment to recap what we've learned today. The method of half-reactions is your ticket to mastering the art of balancing redox equations. By diving into this systematic approach, you've gained a profound understanding of how electrons play a pivotal role in chemical reactions. Remember, electron transfer is the driving force behind redox reactions, and your ability to balance these equations showcases your mastery over this intricate dance of particles. As we wrap up, I encourage you to embrace more complex challenges, push your boundaries, and continue exploring the captivating world of chemistry. Your journey has only just begun, and the wonders of science await your curious minds. Keep up the great work. Hello, dear students. In today's lesson, we're delving into a captivating topic, half-reactions and the fascinating world of oxidation reduction, or redox, processes. While oxidation and reduction indeed occur together, it's often helpful to think of them as distinct processes. Let's explore an illustrative example involving the oxidation of Sn by Fe. This reaction can be broken down into two separate half reactions, the oxidation of Sn and the reduction of Fe. Are you ready to dive deeper into this? Let's take a closer look. All right, students, let's focus on the first half reaction, the oxidation of Sn2 plus ions. During this process, Sn2 plus ions undergo a transformation, turning into Sn4 plus ions. This change is accompanied by the release of two electrons. The half reaction equation is Sn2 plus, Aq, and RAR. Sn4 plus, Aq, plus 2e. This change in oxidation state highlights the transfer of electrons, which is a key characteristic of oxidation. Keep in mind that oxidation involves the loss of electrons. Now, Let's move on to the reduction half reaction. Great job, students. Now, let's focus on the reduction half reaction, the conversion of Fe3 plus ions to Fe2 plus ions. In this process, two electrons are gained by each Fe3 plus ion, leading to the formation of Fe2 plus ions. The half reaction equation is 2 Fe3 plus Aq plus 2 Eaq and RAR, 2 Fe2 plus Aq. Remember, reduction involves the gain of electrons, which results in a decrease in oxidation state. Together, these half-reactions give us a comprehensive understanding of the redox process we've been exploring. 
Bravo, students. As we've discovered, oxidation and reduction processes might be treated as separate entities, but they're deeply intertwined. When we combine the two half reactions we discussed earlier, we get the complete picture of the redox reaction. Remember, a redox reaction involves both the transfer of electrons and changes in oxidation states. By combining the oxidation of SN2 plus and the reduction of Fe3 plus, we obtain the balanced overall redox equation for the reaction we've been exploring. It's truly remarkable how these processes work in harmony to bring about such transformations. Well done, everyone. As we conclude our journey through half reactions and redox processes, it's important to recognize the significance of what we've learned. Half reactions allow us to break down complex redox reactions into individual electron transfer steps, providing us with a deeper understanding of the underlying processes. Redox reactions are incredibly important in chemistry, biology, and even in our daily lives. They're involved in processes ranging from energy generation in batteries to the metabolism of living organisms. This knowledge opens up a world of possibilities for understanding and harnessing the power of chemical transformations. Keep exploring, and remember that every electron transfer carries a story of change in energy. Hello again, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing realm of half-reactions and redox equations. Let's start by understanding what half-reactions are. Equations that showcase either oxidation or reduction on their own are referred to as half-reactions. They play a pivotal role in the world of redox reactions. In these reactions, the number of electrons lost in the oxidation half-reaction must precisely match the number of electrons gained in the reduction half-reaction. This equality ensures that the overall charge remains balanced. When we achieve this harmony and balance both half-reactions, the electrons on both sides negate each other when the two half-reactions are combined. This amalgamation gives us the well-balanced oxidation-reduction equation. So, let's explore the world of balancing electrons and crafting balanced redox equations. Greetings, young minds. Today's journey leads us to understand the significance of balanced redox equations. In any chemical reaction, maintaining charge neutrality is crucial. This is where redox reactions come into play. They involve the transfer of electrons from one species to another. Imagine electrons as tiny messengers that shuttle between reactants, ensuring equilibrium. Achieving balanced equations isn't just a matter of mathematical symmetry. It's a reflection of how nature maintains harmony. The importance of balanced equations resonates across various fields, from understanding biological processes to harnessing energy. As we continue our exploration, remember that these concepts extend far beyond the classroom and find applications in our daily lives. Good day, curious minds. Today, we're embarking on a step-by-step -step journey to master the art of balancing half-reactions. This skill is crucial for crafting balanced redox equations. Here's how it unfolds. First, we identify the oxidation and reduction half-reactions. Next, we balance atoms aside from oxygen and hydrogen. Then, we tackle balancing the oxygen and hydrogen atoms using H2O and H plus ions. The pivotal step involves balancing charges using electrons, ensuring both sides are electrically neutral. Our final checkpoint involves verifying that the charges are indeed balanced on both sides. As you can imagine, this process demands attention to detail and a touch of chemical intuition. Are you ready to dive into the intricacies of balancing these reactions? Welcome back, inquisitive minds. Now that we've unlocked the secrets of balancing half reactions, let's explore the real world impact of redox reactions. These reactions are more than just equations, they shape our world. Consider batteries, those powerhouses of energy storage, where redox reactions make them tick. Corrosion prevention relies on these reactions to shield metal surfaces. Even our environment benefits, as redox reactions are harnessed to clean up pollutants. And guess what? Your body is a hub of redox reactions too. Metabolism and cellular respiration, the processes keeping you alive, are driven by these reactions. 
As you ponder over the numerous applications, remember that chemistry isn't confined to labs. It's woven into the fabric of our lives. Greetings, eager learners. As we wrap up our exploration of redox reactions, let's touch upon the fascinating world of energy. Energy comes in various forms, and today we'll focus on kinetic and potential energy. Imagine kinetic energy as the energy of motion. The bustling electrons in a redox reaction exemplify this concept. Then there's potential energy, influenced by the positions of electrons. This potential energy arises from electrostatic interactions occurring at the atomic level. In the realm of redox reactions, energy changes drive chemical transformations. Chemical reactions involve shifts in energy, making the world around us a dynamic stage of transformations. As we conclude our journey, remember that energy is a force that shapes the universe, and our understanding of it deepens with every exploration. And there you have it, curious minds. Our expedition through the captivating realm of redox reactions comes to an end. From unraveling half reactions to crafting balanced equations, we've delved into the intricate world of electron transfers. Remember, the applications of redox reactions extend far beyond our classroom walls. They power batteries, prevent corrosion, clean up our environment, and even sustain life itself. As we bid adieu, let's carry forward the spirit of scientific inquiry and exploration. The world is a treasure trove of mysteries waiting to be uncovered. And you have the power to unlock its secrets. Keep questioning, keep learning, and keep fueling your thirst for knowledge. Until our next adventure, farewell. Fantastic job, attentive scholars. Now, let's explore the role of ions like H plus and O in redox reactions. In acidic solutions, we often find H plus ions playing a significant role, while basic solutions feature the inclusion of O ions. These ions participate in various steps of the redox process, influencing the overall reaction. However, it's important to note that unless H plus or O is undergoing oxidation or reduction itself, they won't appear in the skeleton equation. Oh, and don't forget about our trusty friend, H2O. It might show up as a reactant or product, but only when it's actively involved in the redox changes. Hello, dear students. Today's topic takes us into the realm of balancing redox equations using a fascinating method called the half-reaction method. It's a powerful technique that helps us balance complex chemical equations involving oxidation and reduction. We'll start with what's called a skeleton ionic equation, which includes only the substances undergoing oxidation and reduction. Oxidation numbers will be assigned when there's uncertainty about oxidation reduction involvement. Keep in mind that in certain cases, we'll encounter H plus ions for acidic solutions and O ions for basic solutions. Additionally, H2O might appear as a reactant or product in redox reactions, but only when it's being oxidized or reduced. Let's dive deeper into this method and discover how it allows us to balance equations effectively. Welcome back, my brilliant students. Today, let's talk about the significance of skeleton equations. These equations offer a simplified view of oxidation and reduction processes by highlighting only the key species undergoing changes. It's like looking at the heart of the reaction without unnecessary distractions. This initial step is crucial in the half-reaction method, forming the foundation upon which we'll build our understanding of balancing intricate redox equations. So, remember, skeleton equations give us a clear focus on what's truly happening in the reaction. Great to have you all here, attentive learners. Now, let's discuss oxidation numbers and how they help us when there's uncertainty about oxidation reduction involvement. Oxidation numbers provide a way to track changes in electron distribution during a reaction. We assign them to elements based on specific rules, and they help us clarify whether a substance is oxidized or reduced. When we encounter complex reactions, and we're not sure which species are undergoing oxidation and reduction, oxidation numbers come to the rescue. They're like our chemical detectives, revealing the true nature of the reaction. Fantastic job, attentive scholars. Now, let's explore the role of ions like H plus and O in redox reactions. 
In acidic solutions, we often find H plus ions playing a significant role, while basic solutions feature the inclusion of O ions. These ions participate in various steps of the redox process, influencing the overall reaction. However, it's important to note that unless H plus or O is undergoing oxidation or reduction itself, they won't appear in the skeleton equation. Oh, and don't forget about our trusty friend, H2O. It might show up as a reactant or product, but only when it's actively involved in the redox changes. Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into the art of balancing chemical equations. This skill is crucial in understanding how substances interact and transform. Our journey starts with equation 20.6, and the first step is to write the two half reactions. Now, pay close attention. In one half reaction, we need to make sure that Mn appears on both sides of the arrow. In the other, the element C should be present on both sides. Let's see how we can achieve this. For the first half reaction, we have MnO4 to 1 in aqueous form transforming into Mn2 plus in aqueous form. In the second half reaction, we're dealing with C2O4 squared in aqueous form changing into CO2 in gaseous form. Take a look at the visual representation of these half reactions. It's like piecing together a puzzle to ensure balance and accuracy. Remember, chemical reactions follow precise rules, and balancing them allows us to maintain the law of conservation of mass. Let's proceed to the next step in our equation balancing journey. Welcome back, students. Today, we're diving into the art of balancing half reactions, an essential skill in chemistry. We're going to explore a step-by-step -step process to balance these equations effectively. Let's start with step 2a. Balancing all the atoms except hydrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen, oxygen. In our examples, we have two half reactions. The first involves permanganate, and we notice that the manganese, manganese, atoms are already balanced on both sides of the equation. Moving on to the oxalate half reaction, we see a slight imbalance in the carbon atoms. To fix this, we add a coefficient of 2 on the right side of the equation, effectively balancing the two carbons on the left. Remember, this step lays the foundation for a balanced equation. Now, let's continue our journey through the intriguing world of chemical reactions. Hello, wonderful students. Our exploration of balancing half reactions continues, and we're now moving on to step 2b. In this step, we concentrate on balancing the hydrogen atoms. These, tiny atoms play a crucial role, and it's important to have an equal number of them on both sides of the equation. To achieve this balance, we strategically apply coefficients to the reactants and products. This might involve adjusting the coefficients we've previously set. Remember, the goal is to ensure that the equation respects the law of conservation of mass, maintaining the same number of atoms on each side. So, let's roll up our sleeves and work on making those hydrogen atoms symmetrical. Great job, dear students. We're making remarkable progress in our quest to balance half reactions. Now, let's tackle step 2c. Balancing the oxygen, oxygen, atoms. I must admit, oxygen atoms can be a bit trickier to balance due to their prevalence in many compounds. However, fear not. With careful consideration and some mathematical finesse, we can achieve the right balance. We'll once again adjust the coefficients strategically to make sure the number of oxygen atoms on both sides of the equation matches. And remember, don't hesitate to double-check your work to ensure every atom is accounted for. Balancing equations is like solving a puzzle, and with each step, we're getting closer to revealing the complete picture of chemical reactions. Hello, bright minds. We're now at the pinnacle of our balancing journey with step 3, achieving overall balance. This step marks the culmination of our efforts, where we review the coefficients for all elements, hydrogen, oxygen, and others. Our goal is to ensure that the equation is perfectly balanced not only in terms of atoms but also in terms of charges. A balanced equation reflects the fundamental principles of chemistry, the conservation of mass and charge. It's a true representation of how matter behaves during chemical reactions. So, take a moment to admire your hard work as you see the equation come together in harmony. Congratulations on mastering the art of balancing half reactions.
Keep the skill close as we continue to unravel the mysteries of the chemical world. Welcome back, everyone. Now, we're delving into the realm of balancing redox reactions. This step-by-step -step process is essential to ensure that chemical equations accurately represent the exchange of electrons between reactants and products. In step 2b, we focus on balancing oxygen atoms. Let's take an example to understand this better. Consider the permanganate half reaction, where the left side has four oxygens, while the right side has none. To rectify this imbalance, we introduce four water molecules on the right side. This adjustment ensures that the number of oxygen atoms is the same on both sides of the equation, MnO, Mn plus 4HO. This step is crucial in achieving a balanced redox equation, allowing us to accurately represent the chemical changes occurring during the reaction. Keep up the excellent work as we progress further. Hello again, dear students. Today's lesson delves deeper into the intriguing realm of balancing chemical equations. We've already learned about balancing the number of atoms on both sides, but there's another crucial aspect to consider. Charge balancing. Let's look at a fascinating example to understand this better. Imagine an equation where the atoms are balanced, but the charges aren't. In such cases, we must ensure that the overall charge remains consistent. Take the equation you see on the screen as an example. On the reactant side, the total charge is calculated as 7 plus. Now, on the product side, the total charge is 2 plus. To equalize the charges, we need to add 5 electrons to the reactant side. This process ensures that not only the atoms but also the charges are in perfect harmony. Keep in mind that balancing equations is like solving a puzzle where every piece needs to fit just right. Let's move on to the next topic and explore more about this fascinating journey of chemical equations. Great job staying with us, students. Now, let's delve even deeper into the process of charge balancing in chemical equations. As we saw in the previous topic, balancing equations isn't just about making sure the same number of atoms are on both sides. It's also about maintaining the overall charge equilibrium. Take a close look at the equation displayed. Here, we're working with electrons, those tiny, charged particles that play a significant role in charge balancing. To balance the charges, we added five electrons to the reactant side. This careful addition ensures that the total charge on both sides of the equation remains consistent. This process is vital because it reflects the fundamental principles of conservation of charge in chemical reactions. Every step we take to balance an equation brings us closer to understanding the intricate dance of atoms and their charges. Ready for more? Let's journey onward. Hello, brilliant minds. Our exploration of balancing chemical equations continues to unfold. Remember, it's not just about the number of atoms, it's about finding harmony in both atoms and charges. In our ongoing example, the equation showcases how we maintain equilibrium not only in the atoms present but also in the charges they carry. By adding those electrons to the reactant side, we're not just achieving balance, we're ensuring that the equation reflects the real-world behavior of atoms and their interactions. When we strike this equilibrium, we're embracing the very essence of chemistry. Each balanced equation is like a glimpse into the intricate choreography of elements dancing to the rhythm of reactions. So, let's keep this momentum going as we unravel more mysteries of chemistry together. Hello once again, dear students. Today, our journey continues with a deep dive into the world of oxidation states and their role in balancing redox reactions. Oxidation states are a crucial tool that allow us to examine reactions and ensure they are balanced. Let's consider a half reaction as our starting point. In this case, we're looking at the transformation of manganese 8 oxide to Mn2+. By analyzing the oxidation states, we see that manganese shifts from a plus 7 oxidation state in manganese 8 oxide to a plus 2 oxidation state in Mn2+. To achieve this transition, each manganese atom gains a total of 5 electrons, aligning perfectly with the balanced half reaction. Let's take a closer look at the fascinating dance of electrons and oxidation states in chemical reactions. 
welcome back, young minds, as we dive further into the intricacies of redox reactions, we encounter a vital step, balancing charges. Let's focus on the oxalate half reaction. After successfully balancing carbon and oxygen, as we learned in step 2a, it's time to address the charge balance, step 2d. By introducing two electrons to the products, we achieve the desired equilibrium. In this particular reaction, C2O2 undergoes a remarkable transformation, producing two molecules of CO2 and releasing two electrons. It's important to maintain overall charge neutrality throughout the reaction, and adding or subtracting electrons is a key strategy in achieving that balance. Let's continue our exploration into the depths of chemical transformations. Hello again, students. Today, we're going to delve into a fascinating aspect of chemical reactions, oxidation states and electron transfer. By examining the oxidation states, we can gain insights into the electron movement within a reaction. Let's take a closer look at a specific example involving carbon. In the compound compound, carbon exhibits an oxidation state of plus 3. As this compound transforms into compound, carbon's oxidation state changes to plus 4. This shift in oxidation state signifies electron transfer. Each carbon atom loses one electron in this process, resulting in a total loss of two electrons for the two carbon atoms present in compound. This observation aligns perfectly with the balanced half reaction we've discussed earlier. It's truly remarkable how oxidation states help us decipher the intricate dance of electrons during chemical transformations. Now, let's press on and uncover more mysteries of chemical reactions. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the intricate world of redox reactions and how to balance them effectively. To achieve balance, we need to ensure that the number of electrons gained in one half reaction matches the number of electrons lost in the other. This brings us to an essential step, multiplying each half reaction by an appropriate integer. This multiplication allows us to achieve the equilibrium we seek. Let's take an example to make this clearer. Consider the reaction involving manganous oxide and oxal-8 ions. We multiply the manganous oxide half reaction by 2 and the oxal-8 half reaction by 5. This gives us a balanced equation where the number of electrons gained equals the number of electrons lost. By performing this crucial step, we can ensure that redox reactions follow the principle of electron transfer. Now, let's move on to our next exciting topic. Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into the intricate world of balancing chemical equations. Imagine equations as puzzles, and our goal is to fit the pieces perfectly. When we talk about a balanced equation, it's actually the result of combining balanced half reactions. This is a crucial step. Think of it as merging two halves of a story to create a complete picture. As we progress, you'll notice something fascinating. The electrons on the reactant and product sides cancel out, in a way, maintaining equilibrium in the equation. But how do we ensure our equation is properly balanced? Well, that's where counting comes into play. By counting atoms and charges, we can verify if everything lines up as it should. In your example, we see 16 hydrogen atoms, 2 manganese atoms, 28 oxygen atoms, 10 carbon atoms, and an overall charge of 4 plus on both sides of the equation. This gives us the green light to say, yes, it's balanced. Keep this in mind as we journey further into the world of chemical equations and their intricate balances. Good to see you all again. Today, let's dive deeper into the concept of half reactions and the role of electrons in balancing equations. Imagine a half reaction as a single thread in a larger tapestry. It's like taking one aspect of a reaction and examining it closely. When we combine these half reactions, it's like weaving those threads together to create a cohesive story. Speaking of stories, think of electrons as the characters that ensure the plot remains engaging. They appear on both the reactant and product sides of the equation, ensuring a harmonious balance. To make this clearer, let's consider a redox reaction. Imagine electrons moving from one species to another. This exchange is what makes the reaction possible. Electrons are the glue that holds the equation together, ensuring that it obeys the laws of conservation. 
So, remember, every electron counts in the fascinating world of balancing chemical equations. Welcome back, inquisitive minds. Today, we're going to sharpen our counting skills, not with numbers, but with atoms and charges. Why is this important? Well, it's the ultimate litmus test for a balanced equation. Think of it as ensuring that both sides of the equation carry equal weight. Let's put our skills to the test using the equation you provided. On one side, we've got 16 hydrogen atoms, 2 manganese atoms, 28 oxygen atoms, and 10 carbon atoms. But what about the charges? Aha! We've got a net charge of 4 plus on both sides. This means everything lines up, and we can confidently say our equation is properly balanced. So, my brilliant students, remember this counting technique as we explore more equations and uncover their hidden symmetries. Hello, young chemists. We've journeyed through the intricate process of balancing chemical equations. You now understand that a balanced equation isn't just a mere equation. It's the harmony achieved through combining balanced half-reactions. Remember the dance of electrons, ensuring equilibrium on both sides. And the key to confirming this balance? Counting atoms and charges. As a final reminder, let's look at our provided equation. It's got 16 hydrogen atoms, 2 manganese atoms, 28 oxygen atoms, 10 carbon atoms, and the magic number, 4 plus. This equation is a beautiful testament to the precision of chemical reactions. Keep these lessons close as we venture into more captivating aspects of chemistry. Until then, stay curious and keep exploring the mysteries of the molecular world. Hello again, students. Today, we're delving into a crucial topic, balancing equations for redox reactions that occur in basic solutions. When dealing with these reactions, the equation takes a slightly different form. Instead of using H plus and HO, we introduce O ions and HO molecules. Why, you ask? Well, both water molecules and hydroxide ions contain hydrogen. This modification might require a bit more maneuvering between the two sides of the equation to achieve the correct half reaction. But don't worry, I'll walk you through it step by step. Now, let's explore an alternate approach that simplifies this balancing act. Hello again, attentive learners. Today, we're delving into a crucial concept called mass balancing in chemical reactions. This method ensures that reactions are precisely balanced, meaning that the same number of atoms of each element exists on both sides of the equation. Let's take a closer look at this process. Imagine a scenario where you're adding the same substance to both sides of the reaction equation. This action maintains balance by neutralizing protons and forming water molecules. For instance, on the side with excess protons, H+, you introduce hydroxide ions, OH, to create water, H2O. Similarly, the other side gains O ions while the H+, ions are consumed. This meticulous process allows us to balance the equation effectively. The resulting water molecules can then be removed from both sides of the equation as necessary. This balancing act ensures that atoms are conserved during chemical reactions. Keep in mind that mastering this skill is essential for understanding and predicting chemical reactions accurately. Let's move forward and explore more captivating aspects of chemical reactions. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of redox reactions that occur under acidic conditions. Redox reactions involve the transfer of electrons between reactants, leading to changes in their oxidation states. Balancing these reactions is a crucial skill in chemistry. Let's take a look at the equation provided, which involves chromium and nitrate ions. We need to balance this equation, accounting for both mass and charge. Pay close attention as we go through the steps to balance this redox equation. Alright, students, let's dive into the process of balancing this redox equation. We begin by breaking down the equation into its individual components. Assigning oxidation states to each element helps us identify which species is undergoing oxidation and which is undergoing reduction. In this case, we have chromium and nitrate ions. To balance the oxygen atoms, we'll add water molecules to the equation. Keep a keen eye on the changes occurring as we work through this process. 
Great job following along, students. Now, we move on to balance the hydrogen atoms using hydrogen ions, H+. We're almost there. We'll also write the half reactions for oxidation and reduction, keeping in mind that electrons are involved in these processes. Balancing the charges by adding the right number of electrons is a crucial step. You're doing fantastic. Keep up the good work. Congratulations, students. We've reached the final step. By combining the balanced half reactions, we've successfully balanced the redox equation. Make sure to double check both mass and charge balance to ensure accuracy. Balanced equations hold great significance in chemistry. They provide insights into the exact quantities of reactants and products involved in a reaction. Well done on mastering the art of balancing redox equations under acidic conditions. Let's take a moment to explore the practical applications of redox reactions. These reactions play a crucial role in various industrial processes in our daily lives. They power batteries, facilitate corrosion, and enable numerous other transformations. Understanding redox reactions grants us insights into how energy is harnessed and chemical changes occur around us. Keep these applications in mind as you continue your journey through the world of chemistry. Hello, students. Welcome to an exciting journey into the realm of rocket propellants and chemical reactions. Our next example takes us to the combination of hydrazine, nitrogen hydrazine, and dinitrogen tetroxide, nitrogen tetroxide. When these substances come together, they create a self-igniting mixture that's utilized as rocket propellant. The result of this reaction is the formation of nitrogen gas, nitrogen, and water, water. Let's dig deeper into this intriguing reaction and explore the fascinating world of oxidation and reduction. Alright, let's delve into the concepts of oxidation and reduction. Remember, oxidation is all about losing electrons, while reduction involves gaining electrons. In our rocket propellant reaction, hydrazine loses electrons, which means it's being oxidized. On the flip side, dinitrogen tetroxide gains electrons, signifying reduction. This exchange of electrons is at the heart of redox reactions, which are a fundamental aspect of chemical reactions like the one we're exploring. As we continue our journey, let's identify the roles of reducing and oxidizing agents in this reaction. Hydrazine takes on the role of the reducing agent, responsible for donating electrons. On the other hand, dinitrogen tetroxide assumes the role of the oxidizing agent, accepting those electrons. This dance of electron exchange is crucial for the transformation of reactants into products and the energy transfers that accompany these changes. Keep these roles in mind as we move forward. Bravo, students. You've gained a solid understanding of the rocket propellant reaction involving hydrazine and dinitrogen tetroxide. To recap, this reaction transforms hydrazine into nitrogen gas, N2, through oxidation, while dinitrogen tetroxide becomes water, H2O, via reduction. Remember, hydrazine serves as the reducing agent, generously offering its electrons, while dinitrogen tetroxide takes on the role of the oxidizing agent, eagerly accepting those electrons. This intricate interplay of oxidation and reduction is the driving force behind various chemical reactions and energy transformations. Hello, students. Today, we're diving into the intriguing world of redox reactions and half reactions. Redox reactions involve the transfer of electrons between reactants, and they play a crucial role in various chemical processes. Our focus today is on completing and balancing half reactions which are the individual reactions that occur during a redox process. Before we get into the details, let's quickly review the concepts of oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is the loss of electrons, while reduction is the gain of electrons. Now, let's tackle some specific examples and explore whether each half reaction is an oxidation or a reduction. Alright, students, let's start with the first half reaction. We have MO3 in an aqueous solution transforming into solid MO. 
To balance this reaction in an acidic solution, we need to add the right number of electrons to ensure both sides are balanced. Can anyone tell me, is MO3 being oxidized or reduced in this reaction? Moving on to our next challenge. Here, we're dealing with the half reaction involving H so becoming SO in an acidic solution. Our task is to balance this reaction while identifying the oxidation and reduction processes. Remember, oxidation is the loss of electrons, and reduction is the gain of electrons. Let's work together to solve this. Fantastic job, everyone! We've successfully tackled several half reactions, balancing them while deciphering the oxidation and reduction processes. Remember, redox reactions are all about electron transfer, and each half reaction contributes to the overall process. Balancing these reactions is essential to ensure the conservation of mass and charge. Keep practicing and exploring the world of redox reactions, as they have significant implications in various fields, from chemistry to environmental science. Thank you for your hard work today, and I can't wait to see you next time as we continue our exploration of chemical reactions. Hello, students. Today, we're delving into the world of redox reactions that take place in acidic solutions. Let's start by understanding what redox reactions are. A redox reaction involves the transfer of electrons between reactants, resulting in changes in oxidation states. Now, when these reactions occur in acidic solutions, they involve the presence of excess H plus ions. Our first example, A, showcases this perfectly. We have a reaction between number 2 and Cr207 squared. In this reaction, number 2 undergoes oxidation, leading to the formation of Cr cubed plus and number 3. As electrons are transferred, we witness the intricate dance of oxidation and reduction. This process holds great significance in various chemical processes. Let's move on and explore more intriguing examples. Welcome back, students. Our journey through redox reactions in acidic solutions continues. In example B, we encounter a reaction between sulfur, sulfur, and NTO-trii. This interaction results in the creation of H2SO3 and N2NO. As we delve into the specifics, Notice how electrons are exchanged, causing oxidation and reduction processes. These reactions play a pivotal role in various chemical transformations. Ready for more? Let's proceed. Hello again, dear students. Today, we're unveiling the exciting world of redox reactions involving organic compounds in acidic solutions. Organic compounds are carbon-based molecules that play a vital role in our daily lives. In example, C, we witness a fascinating reaction between Cr207 squared and CH3OH. This interaction yields the creation of HCOOH and Cr cubed plus. Through the exchange of electrons, we witness the intricate dance of oxidation and reduction, driving chemical processes forward. These reactions are a testament to the intricacies of the molecular world. Ready for more discoveries? Let's continue our journey. Hello, students. Let's delve into an intriguing historical anecdote that laid the foundation for our understanding of voltaic cells. Luigi Galvani and his wife were conducting experiments involving static electricity, which was generated by rubbing frog skin. In a captivating turn of events, they noticed that when a scalpel touched a nerve in the frog's leg, a spark occurred, and the leg twitched as if it were alive. This remarkable observation led them to coin the term, animal electricity. Can you believe the connections between electricity and living organisms? Now, let's continue our journey and explore the fascinating discoveries that followed. Hello, students. Let's delve into an intriguing historical anecdote that laid the foundation for our understanding of voltaic cells. Luigi Galvani and his wife were conducting experiments involving static electricity, which was generated by rubbing frog skin. In a captivating turn of events, they noticed that when a scalpel touched a nerve in the frog's leg, a spark occurred, and the leg twitched as if it were alive. This remarkable observation led them to coin the term, animal electricity. Can you believe the connections between electricity and living organisms? 
Now, let's continue our journey and explore the fascinating discoveries that followed. Welcome back, curious minds. Our exploration takes us to Alessandro Volta, who meticulously investigated Luigi Galvani's initial findings. In 1790, he made a groundbreaking discovery. He found that it wasn't the frog itself that was essential, but rather, he could generate an electrical current by using two different metals separated by an electrolyte. This pivotal moment marked the birth of the voltaic cell. Alessandro Volta's work revealed the potential of harnessing electricity in new ways. Let's uncover more about the components that make up a voltaic cell. Hello, attentive learners. Now that we're diving into voltaic cells, let's break down their key components. First off, we have the anode and cathode, which are the two metal electrodes at the heart of the cell. These electrodes are crucial for the flow of electrons. The electrolyte, which acts as a solution, enables the movement of ions between the anode and cathode. And speaking of electrons, they flow from the anode to the cathode, creating an electric current in the process. Make sure you grasp these fundamental components, as they'll be pivotal in understanding how voltaic cells function. Great job, inquisitive learners! Now that we've got a solid grasp on the components of a voltaic cell, let's take the next step. The magic behind voltaic cells lies in the chemical reactions they harness. These reactions generate an electric current, which is a flow of electrons. What's truly fascinating is that chemical energy is being converted into electrical energy. This energy conversion opens the door to a wide range of applications. Voltaic cells find use in everything from powering small devices to more complex systems. Stay with me, as we explore the remarkable potential of voltaic cells. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of redox reactions and their connection to electrical work. As we've learned, spontaneous redox reactions release energy, and guess what? We can harness this energy to perform electrical work. This fascinating process occurs through a device called a voltaic cell, also known as a galvanic cell. In a voltaic cell, electrons are transferred. But here's the twist. Instead of moving directly between the reactants within the same vessel, they travel through an external pathway. This unique setup allows us to tap into the energy released and use it to generate electrical power. To better understand this concept, let's move on to our next topic. Hello again, students. Let's dive deeper into the world of voltaic cells. These fascinating devices consist of various components working together. We have the anode and the cathode, each with a specific role. The anode is where oxidation takes place, releasing electrons, while the cathode experiences reduction, accepting those electrons. Electrons flow from the anode to the cathode through an external circuit, creating a pathway for electrical current. As this electron flow occurs, the energy released during the redox reaction is transformed into useful electrical power. Can you imagine the intricate dance of electrons within these cells? Now, let's explore another exciting aspect of energy and reactions. Great to have you with us, students. Now that we understand how voltaic cells operate, let's explore the real-world applications of harnessing redox reactions for power. Voltaic cells are at the heart of numerous practical devices we use every day. Think about your portable electronic devices like smartphones and tablets. These rely on voltaic cells to provide the energy they need to function. But it doesn't stop there. Battery-operated vehicles, such as electric cars, also utilize these cells to drive us toward a greener future. And speaking of green, voltaic cells are even crucial in storing energy generated from renewable sources like solar panels and wind turbines. The advantages of using redox reactions for energy are undeniable they're efficient, reliable, and contribute to a more sustainable world. Let's move on to our next fascinating topic. Hello, curious minds. Today, we're diving into the art of balancing redox equations, a skill that unlocks a deeper understanding of these reactions. To achieve this balance, we start by assigning oxidation numbers to each element in the equation. 
This step helps us identify which atoms undergo oxidation and which undergo reduction. Then, we use half reactions, separate equations representing oxidation and reduction, to balance the overall reaction. It's like solving a puzzle where electrons play a crucial role. By ensuring that the charges on both sides of the equation are equal, we conserve charge and achieve a balanced redox equation. This skill is essential for mastering the intricacies of chemical reactions. Let's continue our learning journey. Welcome back, eager learners. Our exploration wouldn't be complete without diving into electrolytic cells and non-spontaneous redox reactions. Unlike voltaic cells, which harness energy from spontaneous reactions, electrolytic cells are used to drive non-spontaneous reactions using electrical energy. These reactions require an external energy source to proceed. Consider the electrolysis of water, where electrical energy is used to break water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen gases. This process is crucial in various industrial applications, from metal plating to the production of chemicals. By understanding how electrolytic cells work, we gain insight into another realm of energy manipulation. As we move forward, Keep these concepts in mind, and let's continue our enriching journey. Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're delving into the captivating realm of spontaneous redox reactions. Picture this. A strip of zinc submerged in a solution containing Cu ions. What unfolds is a remarkable chemical dance. As the reaction commences, observe how the vivid blue hue of Cu ion starts to fade away. Simultaneously, something fascinating happens copper metal begins to deposit onto the surface of the zinc strip. This intricate process reveals the transfer of electrons between the zinc and copper ions, giving rise to a spontaneous redox reaction. It's as if nature has its way of orchestrating these captivating transformations. So, let's take a closer look at the magical world of electron transfer and its impact on the elements involved. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving deeper into the intriguing world of chemical reactions, particularly focusing on electrochemical reactions and the fascinating concept of mass changes. Our journey takes us to electrochemical cells, where a rather unique phenomenon unfolds. Take our example with zinc and copper electrodes. As the reaction progresses, you'll observe something interesting. The zinc electrode gradually vanishes, while the copper electrode gains mass. But here's the twist. Electrodes aren't always meant to participate in reactions physically. Many times, they're crafted from conducting materials like platinum or graphite. These materials don't experience any mass changes during the reaction. Instead, they act as surfaces where the real action happens, the transfer of electrons. This electron exchange is at the heart of electrochemical reactions. Now, let's journey further into the world of chemical transformations and the wonders they reveal. Hello again, dear students. Today, we're about to unravel the captivating realm of redox reactions and the mesmerizing dance of electrons. Redox, short for reduction oxidation, reactions are a cornerstone of chemistry. They involve two essential components, oxidation and reduction. In oxidation, a substance loses electrons, while in reduction, a substance gains electrons. These processes are like two sides of a coin, always happening together. We call them half reactions. And what's the star of this show? Electron transfer. Electrons jump from one species to another, creating a flow of electrical charge. Now, you might wonder, what's the significance of this electron dance? Well, my curious learners, this transfer of electrons is at the heart of energy production. Many of the devices and systems we rely on harness this electron flow to generate power and do incredible work. So, as we dive deeper into redox reactions, keep your eyes on those electrons they're the sparks that ignite a world of possibilities. Greetings, young minds. Today, we're about to explore a technological marvel that powers many aspects of our lives, batteries. Think of batteries as compact storage units for energy. They're not just about convenience. They're a testament to the incredible chemistry at play. Within batteries, chemical reactions take center stage. 
these reactions release electrons and voila, we have electrical energy. There's a diverse range of battery types out there, each designed for specific applications. From your everyday devices to renewable energy systems, batteries are the unsung heroes that keep our world running. So, the next time you power up your gadgets or charge your electric vehicle, remember that it's the magic of chemical reactions that's lighting up your world. Welcome back, inquisitive minds. Today, we're taking a detour into the captivating realm of energy specifically, the energy transformations that unfold during chemical reactions. As we journey through this intricate topic, it's crucial to understand the two main forms of energy at play. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, while potential energy involves stored energy, ready to be released. In chemical reactions, these energy forms intertwine like a delicate dance. Picture atoms and molecules interacting on the atomic scale, and you'll begin to see the shifts in potential energy. This energy change fuels the reactions we're exploring today, driving molecules to rearrange and form new substances. It's as if the atoms themselves are whispering secrets of energy exchanges, hidden within the elegance of chemistry. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of voltaic cells and half-cells. Now, a voltaic cell comprises two half-cells. Each half-cell plays a distinct role. One engages in oxidation, while the other handles reduction. The anode, which is one half-cell, is where oxidation takes place. This is where substances lose electrons. Meanwhile, the cathode, the second half-cell, is the site of reduction, where substances gain electrons. This process leads to the generation of electrical energy. Let's explore this concept further with a practical example. Alright, students, let's dive into the specifics of oxidation and reduction within voltaic cells. In our example, the anode hosts the oxidation half reaction. Here, zinc, zinc, experiences oxidation and loses electrons, transforming into zinc ions, zinc 2,3 in the aqueous solution. The reaction is represented as zinc ace turning into zinc 2 3 ace while releasing two electrons. On the other hand, at the cathode, reduction is occurring. Copper ions, Q per 2 3, present in the aqueous solution gain those electrons to become solid copper, Q per. This reduction process is expressed as Q per 2 3 ace. This exchange of electrons between substances is what generates the flow of electrical current and powers various devices. Fantastic job, students. Now that we understand the chemical reactions occurring at the anode and cathode, let's see how this translates into generating electrical energy. As oxidation takes place at the anode, electrons are released. These electrons flow from the anode to the cathode through an external circuit. At the cathode, as reduction takes place, electrons are accepted, leading to a buildup of negative charge. This movement of electrons creates an electrical potential difference between the two half cells. This potential difference drives the flow of electrons through the external circuit, resulting in the generation of electric current. This current is what powers the devices connected to the voltaic cell. You're doing wonderfully, students. Let's wrap up our exploration of voltaic cells by discussing their applications and significance. These cells find a crucial role in our lives, especially in the realm of portable electronics. Batteries, which rely on voltaic cells, power various devices we use daily, such as cell phones, laptops, and remote controls. Their ability to provide a sustained electrical current makes them ideal for remote and wireless applications. Moreover, voltaic cells offer a sustainable energy source with a relatively low environmental impact compared to traditional fossil fuels. Understanding the chemistry behind these cells not only enhances our scientific knowledge but also contributes to the advancements shaping our modern world. Hello again, dear students. Let's embark on a new adventure that delves into electrochemical cells and the captivating world of redox reactions. In these fascinating systems, we witness the interplay of electrons as they journey through an external circuit. 
Imagine zinc metal as it undergoes oxidation at the anode, relinquishing electrons into the circuit. These electrons travel through the circuit to the cathode, where they're utilized in the reduction of CuAQ. This captivating dance of electrons leads to some remarkable changes within the cell. As zinc gets oxidized, its electrode loses mass, and concurrently, the concentration of the ZnAq solution experiences an increase. On the other hand, the copper electrode at the cathode gains mass, while the CuAq solution undergoes a reduction in concentration as it transforms into solid copper. This dynamic exchange of matter and electrons showcases the true elegance of electrochemical cells and redox reactions. Isn't science just incredible? Greetings, young minds. Today, we're delving deeper into the fascinating realm of electrode processes and the intriguing changes in mass that occur within electrochemical cells. As we journey into the microscopic world of atoms and electrons, picture the zinc electrode at the anode. Through oxidation, it releases electrons and loses mass. This process also gives rise to the release of zinc ions, Zn, into the solution, enriching its concentration. Meanwhile, at the cathode, the copper electrode undergoes a reduction process. This results in a gain of mass as solid copper forms and takes its place. The intricate dance of atoms and charges within this cell showcases the captivating transformation of matter and energy. So, keep your curiosity ignited as we venture further into the heart of these electrochemical marvels. Welcome back, inquisitive learners. Let's uncover the magic of concentration changes within our electrochemical cell. Prepare to be amazed as we explore the effects of oxidation and reduction on the concentrations of different ions. Through the captivating process of oxidation, the concentration of zinc to aqr to in aqueous solution increases as zinc ions are liberated into the solution. Simultaneously, at the cathode, the concentration of qr to in aqueous solution decreases as it undergoes reduction, forming solid copper. This mesmerizing equilibrium between these processes showcases the balance maintained within the cell. Remember, these redox reactions are not only about transformations. They're also a source of remarkable electrical energy that powers our devices and fuels our technological advancements. Stay tuned as we unravel more wonders of electrochemistry. Brilliant minds, are you ready to explore the incredible potential of electrochemical marvels? Our journey thus far has illuminated the dynamic interplay of electrons, ions, and reactions within electrochemical cells. But the story doesn't end here. These cells are much more than just experiments. They're energy conversion devices that influence our daily lives in profound ways. From batteries that power our smartphones and laptops to the electrical systems in our cars, electrochemical cells play an integral role. The magic of redox reactions lies at the heart of these practical applications. By harnessing the flow of electrons, we can light up our world and drive technological progress. So, remember, the chemistry we're delving into today has a direct connection to the devices you interact with every day. Let your fascination guide you as we continue unraveling the mysteries of electrochemistry. Hello, students. Today, we're delving into a crucial component of voltaic cells, the salt bridge. This U-shaped tube plays a vital role in maintaining the balance of charge and facilitating the flow of ions within the cell. Let's take a closer look at the details. Our salt bridge contains an electrolyte solution, often nano, a cube, chosen for its non-reactive nature with both the electrodes and other ions present in the voltaic cell. This helps prevent unwanted chemical reactions. The electrolyte solution is carefully contained within the bridge, often in the form of a paste or gel, to ensure it remains in place even when the tube is inverted. Now, let's explore how the salt bridge aids in maintaining charge neutrality and enabling ion flow within the voltaic cell. As we venture further into the workings of the salt bridge, let's understand how it ensures a balanced exchange of ions during oxidation and reduction reactions. As these reactions occur at the electrodes, ions from the salt bridge start migrating into the respective half cells. Notably, cations move towards the cathode half cell, while anions move towards the anode half cell. 
This migration of ions is crucial in neutralizing any charge imbalances that might arise within the half-cell solutions. The salt bridge acts as a mediator, allowing this migration to happen smoothly and ensuring the voltaic cell maintains its stability and functionality. Let's dig deeper into the specifics of ion migration within the salt bridge. Regardless of the type of device used to facilitate ion movement, there's a consistent pattern. Anions and cations move in distinct directions. Anions, which are negatively charged ions, always migrate toward the anode the site of oxidation. On the other hand, cations, positively charged ions, always migrate toward the cathode the site of reduction. This predictable behavior ensures that the voltaic cell maintains its equilibrium and continues to produce the desired flow of electrons and electrical energy. As we conclude our exploration of the salt bridge, it's evident that this component plays a fundamental role in the functionality of voltaic cells by allowing ions to migrate and neutralize charge imbalances. The salt bridge maintains an essential balance within the half cells. This, in turn, prevents the accumulation of excessive charges that could disrupt the cell's operation. Ultimately, the salt bridge ensures a continuous flow of electrons, which is critical for generating the electrical energy we harness. Our journey into the world of voltaic cells and their components has given us a deeper understanding of the intricate processes at play. Now, as we wrap up, let's reflect on the significance of maintaining equilibrium in chemical systems. Hello again, students. Today, we're going to delve into the fascinating world of voltaic cells and the captivating electron flow within them. Let's start by understanding what a voltaic cell is. It's a device that generates electrical energy through a chemical reaction. Now, in a voltaic cell, something very interesting happens. Electrons flow from the anode to the cathode through the external circuit. This flow of electrons has a direction leading us to label the anode with a negative sign and the cathode with a positive sign. It's almost like the electrons are drawn towards the positive cathode from the negative anode through the external circuit. To help you visualize this concept, let's take a look at figure 20.6, where the relationships within a voltaic cell are summarized. You can see the labeled anode and cathode, and we'll explore how this electron flow plays a vital role in energy production. Welcome to Topic 3, Dear Students. Today, we're uncovering the key components of a voltaic cell and understanding their significance. A voltaic cell is composed of various parts that work together to produce electrical energy. The anode and cathode are the stars of the show. As we've discussed, the anode is where oxidation takes place, leading to the release of electrons, while the cathode is where reduction occurs, involving the acceptance of electrons. These reactions are essential for the flow of electrons and the generation of electricity. To prevent direct mixing of substances and maintain the overall cell balance, we can use either a porous glass disc or a salt bridge to separate the half cells. This separation allows ions to move between the half cells, completing the circuit while maintaining charge neutrality. Figure 20.6 provides a clear visual representation of these components and their arrangement. Here we are on topic 4, ready to dive deeper into the world of electron flow and the intriguing relationship between the anode and cathode. Remember, electrons are the carriers of electric current, and in a voltaic cell, they move from the anode to the cathode through the external circuit. But why is the anode labeled with a negative sign, and the cathode with a positive sign? Well, it all ties back to the processes occurring at these sites. At the anode, oxidation takes place, leading to the loss of electrons. This electron loss results in a net negative charge at the anode. On the other hand, at the cathode, reduction happens, involving the gain of electrons, and this leads to a net positive charge at the cathode. This labeling system helps us keep track of the flow of electrons and the overall cell behavior. Think of it as electrons journeying from the negative anode towards the positive cathode driven by chemical reactions that generate electrical energy. Let's move on to topic 5, 
where we're exploring the methods used to separate the half cells within a voltaic cell. Why do we need to separate these half cells, you ask? Well, separating them serves multiple purposes. It prevents direct mixing of the substances involved in the reactions, maintaining their integrity and allowing us to control the reaction environment more effectively. Additionally, separating the half cells prevents unwanted side reactions that could interfere with the desired chemical processes. Two common techniques for separation are the use of a porous glass disc or a salt bridge. The porous glass disc acts as a physical barrier, allowing ions to move through while keeping the reactants separated. Similarly, a salt bridge facilitates ion movement, ensuring that charge neutrality is maintained in both half cells. These separation methods are crucial for a well-functioning voltaic cell, ensuring that the chemical reactions proceed smoothly and efficiently. Hello, students. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of voltaic cells and understanding how they work. A voltaic cell is a device that converts chemical energy into electrical energy through redox reactions. Now, let's explore the given statement. In a voltaic cell, electrons indeed flow from the anode to the cathode. This electron movement is a crucial part of the redox reactions that take place. Remember, oxidation occurs at the anode where electrons are lost, and reduction occurs at the cathode, where electrons are gained. This flow of electrons sets up the electrical potential difference that drives the cell's current. Let's move on and explore more captivating concepts. Great to see your enthusiasm, students. As we dive deeper into the world of voltaic cells, let's talk about redox reactions and the vital role of the cathode. Remember. Redox reactions involve both oxidation and reduction. Oxidation occurs at the anode, leading to the loss of electrons, while reduction takes place at the cathode, where electrons are gained. This movement of electrons is what creates the electric current we're familiar with. Now, let's appreciate the significance of the cathode. It's where reduction occurs, and as electrons flow to the cathode, the positive ions in the solution are attracted, maintaining the overall charge balance. Let's continue this enlightening journey. Hello again, dear students. Our exploration of voltaic cells wouldn't be complete without understanding the importance of ion balance and the role of the salt bridge. Maintaining a balance of ions is essential for the cell's proper functioning. And here's where the salt bridge comes into play. The salt bridge allows the flow of ions between the anode and cathode compartments. Importantly, anions flow through the salt bridge to the cathode, while cations flow to the anode. This movement of ions ensures that as electrons flow through the external circuit, the overall charge balance is preserved. Isn't it intriguing how every component in the cell plays a significant role? Let's keep our curiosity alive and move forward. Welcome, students, to our next enlightening topic. Let's talk about polarity and the charge at the cathode in a voltaic cell. It's important to grasp the concept of polarity electrons flow from the anode, which is negatively charged, to the cathode, which is positively charged. This polarity sets up the driving force for electron movement. However, it's essential to note that while the cathode is positively charged, it's not accurate to say it's negatively charged. The positive charge at the cathode is a result of the reduction reactions taking place there. Remember, it's all about maintaining that balance of charges and understanding the intricate dance of electrons and ions. Keep up the enthusiasm as we uncover more knowledge. Welcome back, dear students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of voltaic cells and exploring some statements related to them. Let's start with statement A. Uh, the anode indeed plays a crucial role in voltaic cells. It's the electrode where oxidation occurs. Remember, oxidation involves the loss of electrons from a substance. Now, for statement, B. A voltaic cell doesn't always have a positive EMF, which stands for electromotive force. The EMF depends on the potential difference between the two electrodes and can be positive, negative, or even zero. Fascinating, isn't it? Lastly, let's discuss statement, C. In a voltaic cell, a salt bridge or a permeable barrier is indeed necessary. 
This bridge allows ions to move between the two half cells, maintaining charge balance and facilitating the flow of electrons. So, remember, the salt bridge is a key player in the operation of a voltaic cell. Keep these points in mind as we venture deeper into the world of electrochemistry. Good day, students. Today, we're going to explore an intriguing topic. Voltaic cells and the exciting world of redox reactions. Voltaic cells play a vital role in our understanding of how chemical reactions can generate electrical energy. In the setup we'll discuss, two half cells are involved. One with an iron strip placed in a solution of FESO4, and the other with an aluminum strip in a solution of AL2, SO4, 3. As we dive into the details of this voltaic cell, keep in mind that it's all about the transfer of electrons between substances. Now, let's move forward and uncover the specifics of this remarkable cell reaction. All right, students, let's focus on the first half cell in our voltaic cell setup. Here, we have an iron strip immersed in a solution of FESO. As the iron strip interacts with the solution, it leads to the formation of Fe ions in the solution. This process involves oxidation, where iron atoms lose electrons and become positively charged ions. The half reaction for this process can be summarized as iron solid undergoes oxidation, producing Fe ions and releasing two electrons. This flow of electrons is a crucial aspect of the redox reactions occurring in our voltaic cell. Moving on to our second half cell, we have an aluminum strip placed in a solution of aluminum sulfate, Al, So, this setup results in the formation of aluminum 3 plus ions in the solution. Here, we witness a reduction half reaction, where aluminum ions gain electrons and transform back into aluminum solid. This reaction can be represented as follows. Two aluminum 3 plus ions gain six electrons each, leading to the formation of aluminum solid. This process demonstrates the crucial concept of reduction, where substances gain electrons and their charge becomes more negative. All right, students, now it's time to put all the pieces together. The magic happens when we combine the reactions from both the iron and aluminum half cells. The overall cell reaction can be summarized as follows. Two aluminum solids react with three iron U ions to yield three iron solids and two aluminum threed ions. As these reactions take place, electrons are released from the iron half cell and flow through the external circuit to the aluminum half cell. This flow of electrons is what generates the electrical current that we can harness for various applications. As we conclude our exploration of this voltaic cell setup. Let's take a moment to appreciate the broader significance of this concept. Voltaic cells are the foundation of batteries, providing us with portable sources of energy that power various electronic devices we rely on daily. The redox reactions occurring within these cells enable the transformation of chemical energy into electrical energy. This connection between chemistry and electricity is at the heart of the field of electrochemistry, which has far-reaching implications in modern technology and scientific research. So remember, students, every time you use a battery-operated device, you're tapping into the incredible world of voltaic cells and redox reactions.